Now, I'm disappointed I haven't brought all of the separate books with me because Shadows at the Gate is a beautiful book as well. And it was a book with a cover painted by Evelina Katz from, who lived on Erislanen. Uh, it's, it's like a painting of that place, sort of abstract. It's a book that contains mostly poems about Ireland written out of the great longing I felt for so long about wanting to live here and wanting to be here and wanting to be Irish again. And my children were young. It has poems in it about 9-11 uh, when it happened and the impact on them. <clears throat> but it also has a poem for my father in it. Every book except the Gallipoli book seems to have a poem in it for my father. So my father is now 96 <clears throat> and he is living independently and driving and fishing and playing bowls and re can recite poetry <clears throat> like you wouldn't believe. He had radiation therapy last year for skin cancer and I have a poem about that <clears throat> in the new book, Line of Drift, during which he only survived by reciting poetry to the walls. This is an old poem. But a good one, I think, for him. Coming of age, for Norm. They're not like lovers. After they've gone, we don't breathe in longing, uncovering the pillow, or burrow our faces, searching for their scent in the hug of damp sheets. But we do let the stripped bed lie, its jumble of discarded bedding still guarding the imprint of their body in sleep. They're not like children. In the dark, we don't sleep close to them to share their dreaming, listening through our own slumber to wake at the instant their breath changes. But we do start when they turn abruptly, bumping the wall. They're not like friends, laughing late by the fire, eating chocolate croissants at 2 a.m., looking over new poems together, cleaver in hand tipsily falling into the covers, begging for a long lie-in. No, these are the fathers of the middle-aged. Not the ones we knew when we were young, always turned away, locked in. Not understanding, fearful of our tramping march to change the world, our shouting, our disrespect. We told them nothing then. They come now to give their time, listening to our lives where advice is useless and they know it. They help get the children to school in families that used to have men. They fix the dripping tap, make tables for their grandchildren out of red cedar, lovingly turning the legs, polishing the top, so they gleam burnished in small bedrooms covered in Star Wars Lego and nine-year-old birthday cards. At 82, they go out when we're busy and chop the wood, so our barrows are always full. Then set the fire, pe peel the vegetables, prepare dinner. They show us how to set drip lines in the garden for drier times, tell us to drive more slowly, stand right in the way when we're cooking dinner, whiskey in hand, joking that we're always telling them what to do. After five or six days, returning to busy lives rich with friends, they drive away into the long trip home, down that wet road with its slips and slides, its dark, distracting trucks looming through the fog, its startling high beam distortions. Flutters of fear for them trembling in our chests. Inside the sad tug of their leaving, we go back to sit at the desk, beside the fold-down lounge, leaving the stubborn huddle of duvet and sheets still not pushed aside into laundry, cheeks carrying the soft tears of rain inside.